You know, as with many families, the main gathering point is the table, that place where they share a meal together. It is here that families share their lives, problems, and they find a place of common acceptance in spite of who they are or who we are. The table, the table has a place in the fellowship of the family life. That is that communion of the family. It's always been important. The table has brought people together, sometimes from many backgrounds. Often this was the common place of gathering, the center of family life. We can see in Luke 22, Luke 22, where Jesus Christ, where Jesus Christ begins to prepare for that communion, that Passover, the Lord's Supper, that place of common meeting for each and every one of us. And this gathering that we see here in Luke 22, which has been historically referred to as the Last Supper, and it is, in many respects, the very last supper of the Old Covenant. Yet Jesus would introduce new sacrament, which demonstrates the new covenant that is God's new relationship that is available to all humanity, not just to the nation of Israel. This Lord's Supper is, in many respects, the first supper of the new covenant. In Luke 22, verse 7, Luke 22, verse 7, we read, Then came the first day of the week, the, of the days of unleavened bread, <clears throat> on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, so that we may eat it. So Jesus Christ is very intentional about his gathering, that this supper, this last supper, this Passover, would accomplish his purpose. Our Lord had in mind a definite purpose here in Luke 22 for gathering his people together around the Lord's table. In verse 20, in verse 19, verse 19, as Jesus Christ begins to institute the new symbols, that is those new sacraments, that gives the Old Testament Passover an entire new meaning and makes it the Lord's Supper. Jesus, we read here in verse 19, when he had taken some bread and had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them. And one thing, understand Jesus Christ isn't just giving thanks for that bread, but he is actually giving thanks for what that bread symbolizes. You see, he's giving thanks because he can redeem humanity back to the great God through his sacrifice. So he's literally giving thanks to God for the opportunity to bring redemption to humanity. And when he had taken some bread and had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when he had taken the cup, after they had eaten, he said, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. The new covenant in my blood. And even as Jesus Christ, there with his disciples, there in that upper room, there in that Passover, now redeemed into the Lord's Supper, even as he institutes this Lord's Supper, which pictures the new relationship that we can have with God, we see that there at that very table with our Lord, there in the presence of those disciples, we see in verse 21 that there is betrayal. Jesus says, but behold, the hand of the one who will betray me is here. So we see there at the Lord's table, we see betrayal. In verse 23, it says, and they began to discuss among themselves which one of them it might be who was going to do this. We see in Mark 14, verses 18 to 19, that they begin to blame one another. 
So we see shifting of responsibilities. We see accusations. And unfortunately, in verse 24, we read, And there arose, even in the midst of this Lord's Supper, there in the midst of the very last time that they would share this with Jesus Christ, this side of eternity, there in the midst of that, we see disputes. We see humanity for what it is. So often when we read through these passages, our focus is on the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is proper and appropriate. But we need to take notice of what is happening with the disciples there at that table. Betrayal, posturing, blaming, accusations, shifting of responsibility. In verse 24, And there arose a dispute among them as to which one of them was to be regarded the greatest. So we see posturing. We see self-exaltation. All these things are at the Lord's table and going on around the Lord's table. All these things that breed strife. Even at the very table that our Lord institutes the Lord's Supper. And these things that we see taking place around the Lord's table is the exact reason why we need to come to his table. These are the very weaknesses and limitations and the brokenness of humanity that we should bring to the table of the Lord. These are the very reasons we come to that table because this is exactly what humanity is. You see, this is why Jesus was instituting the Lord's Supper. He was instituting it because this is what we are. This is all of us. This isn't just the disciples 2,000 years ago. This is each one of us. This is why we need to come to the table of the Lord. We need to bring and acknowledge our weaknesses and limitations there at his table. And these are the very reasons we need to share in that communion. In verse 26, Jesus says to them, but he speaks to each and every one of us. He says, but it is not this way with you. That is that self-exaltation, this posturing, lording authority over one another. But it is not this way with you. But the one who is greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader, the servant. For who is greater, the one who reclines at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who inclines at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. We can see that same thing described in Philippians 2, verse 3, that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ divested himself of the glory of deity and condescended to our humanity to become a servant. You see, each and every one of us, in all of our brokenness and all of our limitations, we need to come to the table of the Lord. You see, there's no other place that we can have all these problems, weaknesses, brokenness, and sins dealt with, but to bring them to the table of the Lord. When we come to his table, when we share in that communion, we are acknowledging our weaknesses and our need. We're acknowledging that we need him, that we cannot do it on our own, that we need his help, that we need him. Even in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul writing of the Lord's Supper, he's talking about many of those who were exhibiting several problems as they came to the Lord and to the Lord's table. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, Paul writing to the church 2,000 years ago, but he's writing to each and every one of us. And the Corinth church was a church that had many problems, drunkenness, adultery, all those weaknesses and all those broken, sinful states that each and every one of us